So we've got a sixth gen here. iFlash installed right now. Lock switch not on. Goes in there fine. All right, there's the brand new green CF. It's in there pretty secure, there's no gap. SD card already has the operating system on it and some music for that matter. We got two white lines, we'll do only the first one is visible. Yeah, yeah, we'll see how that does. It's not all the way in there. Yeah, immediately, okay. We're gonna try again. And, oh, there's the red light. Well, there you go, boom. It turned on. Okay, jump cut. Okay, we're back uh, with these versus, you know, that. These came in the fifth gen the videos, the early model ones. It's pretty common to see them on 30 gigs, but I've seen only a couple of the 60 gigs. It's probably one of the rarest hard drives out there. It is longer. Theoretically, it would give more secure connection. I'm not really sure what the ideal way to secure uh, the zip is, especially if it's hanging out a little bit, not fully latched down, or at least not fully inserted. Let's see if it'll boot here. It's all the way in right now. I'm gonna try and uh, try it again, I'm about halfway in. I did see a red light there. Well, I mean, I had a lot of issues with these, and this one seems to be taking it quite well. So let's go ahead and see if we can access. your diagnostics on. All right, I'm gonna try one more time. I know you can buy the, the standard uh, zip connectors, right? Uh, wholesale, they're, you know, five cents a piece, brand new. I'm not sure where you can buy this uh, extended one. I refer to it as the Hitachi Flex. Uh, yeah, there's a red light, interesting. You know, I was hoping for failure, but it seems to be working all right. I hope, uh, you know, I figured it out. I'm not just lucky. Yeah, I'll probably call it there. So I just finished editing and I decided I wanted to try one that had given me issues before. Yeah. So a couple months ago, I actually had the idea of buying all these cheap adapters, all the different kinds I could find and doing videos on them, seeing if I could get them to work at all. Is it M2 one? Yikes. I really don't even know what this is. I don't think it fits in an iPod one day let's do it and we're back in 60 fps now here is the working one oh I'll take out that red card here's the one that i couldn't get to work i had a lot of problems with this one i had to use an actual compact flash card to see if it was the adapter or the CF. We're about to find out, huh? No gap there. Right now that thick flex is still in. Apparently the trick is, I'm not sure if it's meant to be like this, but insertion up to the point where you can only see that first white line. These adapters have given me so much trouble. I've wasted hours trying to get them to work. Apparently people can get them to work every time. And there you go, it works every time. It really must be that trip up to the first white line. That's awesome. Well, I think we're done here. But the question is, should you actually use this? The answer of course is. But real talk, real talk. They do work, and they are cheap. For a beginner, it's probably the single most confusing repair or upgrade that you can choose to do. I can only imagine the amount of hours, $5 here, $6, and all the sad children whose iPods don't work anymore. Would I actually recommend this? If you're okay with sitting down and taking half an hour to figure it out, knock yourself out. But you're going to need to secure the zip connection from the iPod 
to the board, make sure that latch doesn't come up, secure the CF. You should probably secure the SD in the CF and the micro SD and the micro SD adapter. And maybe you should probably adhere it to the board so it doesn't move when you close it. And even then, it probably will still give you issues. If you're dead set on green CF and red card, you should... Use one of these. Now, I don't really have too much experience with these, as made evident by the video. Big shout out. Right there. Boom. I can't say how much more these help, but they definitely don't hurt. Personally, I have no use for these, aside from maybe fooling around every once in a while. They're just not a high quality product. My warranty claims would go through the roof if I shipped these. I use the iFlash. They're getting pretty slim nowadays, as in the, the supply is getting a little low. Look at that. Oh yeah, that's awesome. It's made for the iPod, whereas this was made to go in a laptop netbook 10 years ago. It's not the most power efficient thing. You will see higher yields with battery life using this versus a traditional hard drive. But if you're really gonna go through the pain of the cost of this, the cost of this, a little bit of this, some of that, maybe this, you're still spending a good amount of money for what is in the end a suboptimal solution. Yeah, it works. Yeah, it's cool. It functions fine and it's the cheapest option out there, but just look at yourself in the mirror, man.